This Orton, conference will now you. be recorded. I appreciate you doing that for me. Hi, everyone. I'm Brittany Wright. My pronouns are they, them, and I am the Community Engagement and Resources Consultant for the Bureau of Library Development, and this is the very first Connection Creators meeting. Yay! <laughs> It's sort of a revival of the previous e-government work group, and I'm very excited to see so many people in here, way more than I was expecting, so that's super great. I'm just really happy about that. Um, this is my first time doing a sort of work group, so you know, just be patient and kind with me, which I'm sure all of you will be, but this is my first time doing this sort of thing, so, <laughs> so nice to see all of you. Um, someone had asked, I'm not sure, I don't believe they're in, this meeting currently. Someone had asked if there was an agenda. There's not for the most part. It's just whatever um, you all would like to discuss. Uh, Gene Coppola was supposed to be here. Maybe he'll be here a little bit later because there was something he wanted to talk about that he's doing at his library. But um, I, I suppose to sort of start off, uh, something that came up during the uh, Public Library Director's assembly, assembly earlier today, for those of you who were there, was talking about partnerships and um, you know how how do you go about like making one like what are the steps what needs to be done and so I guess just for the opening question we'll maybe start with what's hopefully an easy question you know what sort of partnerships do you have in place at your library what's working well what's not and let's just you know kind of discuss that also um, since I am still a bit new I've only been here It'll be five months at the end of the month. Um, if you want to in the chat, just sort of tell me what library uh, you work for. That'd be great, just so I can keep track of that and put some titles to faces. So, yeah, anyone who wants to uh, share about what partnerships they have, just go right ahead. Or partnerships that you want to have. That's also good, because that's one of the things that I'm trying to do is to help connect you guys to more resources. Uh, I can go, if you like. Uh, hi, this is Jamie Basio. I'm the government research librarian at Palm Beach County Library. Um, I am excited to say that we finally got a social worker uh, at the library. Comes here twice a week, uh, and uh, yeah, so far it's been it's been pretty successful. It got kind of a slow start, but um, you know, as more people have had issues with, you know, finding employment and housing. She's been very helpful. So uh, I'm very happy with that. And we are still working with the food bank, uh, who is now at eight of our locations, uh, providing assistance with applying for SNAP. Uh, so that's been very helpful because uh, a lot of the partners they worked with in the past are still closed to the public. So we were able to provide the space for them uh, to, to help applicants with their SNAP application. I'll jump in. This is um, Melissa Baker with Lee County Library System. And um, I see Amy Jane McWilliam is also on the call, so she can also touch on this. But we have really strong partnerships with our local school district. Um, we partner with them for the summer reading program to offer you know, our paper-based reading program to all of the students. Um, they work with us for our reading festival, which has just kicked off this week. Um, so throughout the year, we really do try to strengthen that partnership and, and foster it in, um, work with them for you know advertising our events and then you know just back and forth on different things we also partner with the parks and rec and other county departments pretty regularly um, and we have a lot of outreach partners as well where we provide deposit collections for books at off-site locations that can help reach the underserved that can't get to the library as regularly um, amy jane i don't know if you want to jump in i know i kind of uh threw us both in at the same time, but feel free to unmute if you want to add more to that about the schools in particular. Um, yeah, the school district has been actually more receptive to partnering um, since the pandemic. Um, not that they weren't before, it's been a growing relationship, but certainly as their um, costs uh, have expanded for like other things like disinfecting and, and, and all those types of things, um, 
you know, being able to offer supplemental services that support their mission um, helps. And that's really where we've been able to create those partnerships when what we provide is a service that, that helps the agency. So, you know, what we get out of it is we get access to their student body <laughs> and they get access to our free services. Um, you know, Lee Health is also another agency that we um, are starting to work with some more. I've been working with their, um, with their child care centers um, that are at their three hospital locations. Um, but I've been slowly like, you know, you know, pushing open the door more and more each year. So um, last year we started working with Golisano Children's Hospital um, and I'm hoping to start working with their birthing coordinators so that we can, you know, reach new parents. Um, so. Okay, um, does anyone else wanna join in? For those of you uh, who have just popped in, we're discussing uh, what partnerships are working at your library and or what partnerships you'd like to have. And also thank you to everyone who's been dropping their information into the chat because it's very helpful for me. We have so many libraries. I love libraries, <laughs> but <laughs> it's just great to get more uh, info about everyone. Um, yeah, so if anyone has any partnerships that they're currently doing that maybe you want to see at other libraries or, you know, what's working great for you with that partnership or a partnership you'd like to have. Okay, in the chat, uh, Kay French just said that we just started helping with vaccination appointments. Um, I suppose on that topic, is anyone else doing that? I think there was some discussion of that at the assembly, but is that something that you find that your library is doing? or not doing or something you want to do? We've, we've been helping people for our um, our smaller communities like Pahokee and, and, and Belglade and South Bay. We've been calling residents to let them know about uh, vaccination sites and things like that. So yeah, we've been, we've been helping with that. Our library also sends some staff over um, to assist with the vaccination. Uh, process as well and to help you know with with the queues and the lines and everything so we have employees that we we deploy in that area as well hey Jamie quick question where did you get the social worker from um I actually was not involved in the process this was somebody's silly project um, but she uh, I believe they coordinated this uh, she's from originally from Miami and I think okay. she comes she comes up here twice a week. So I'd have to ask Adam exactly how, but I think they coordinate this with Cephalin. Okay. There was also a mention in the chat about how um, AARP volunteers are um, available at the library to make appointments for helping with taxes. Um, and that's, that's just super great. Um, I don't know how many of you have gotten the Community Connections uh, newsletter that I send out. The, it's only been one issue so far, but in there was a mention of, uh, you know, just sort of tax preparedness. And I know you guys are definitely on top of that. So um, tax, you know, taxes are, well, not taxes are important. We all obviously should file our taxes, but tax education is important. Oh, okay, cool. Jody saying in Winter Park that they have AARP too. So. We had AARP, um, ah. <laughs> but they couldn't do it this year at our library because we're Saturdays and they didn't have volunteers to do it on Saturday. So we're just sending them to other libraries in the area now. We've got a list. Okay. Tell them when, when to go and who to contact. Okay, there's also some uh, mention in the chat of Vita. Uh, not too certain what VITA stands for, though. But Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. It's run Thank through you. the IRS. Thank you. Super helpful. 
Um, but yeah, it seems like a bunch of different places are doing tax help. So that's that's super cool. I know some, I can't remember which library it was. I'm following a good chunk of y'all on Twitter, but somebody was talking about how they were doing tax help for some period of time and that was fascinating. Oh, thank you. Casey in the chat has just posted a link to um, an IRS link for uh, tax return prep. So thank you, Casey. That's appreciated. Um, well, Palm Beach County is trying to do their school system is um, doing Wi-Fi without throughout the county and they they're setting up antennas for Wi-Fi um, throughout I guess the county um, and we've been our, our town is working with them to try and uh, get uh, all the children available um, or get the Wi-Fi for all the children and we we got the community connect program so uh, we have five hotspots to to lend out and um we're contacting the schools we only have two in town um we have two uh elementary schools in town and we're contacting them to tell them that we've got these hot spots and we're also contacting two of our parenting groups bridges at lake park and uh parent to parent so that they can get that information out as well Okay, cool. Um, I guess on that note then, on the subject of Wi-Fi, um, how is that working out for y'all, for those of you who are, you know, trying to extend out your Wi-Fi for the community hotspots, that sort of thing? Are you seeing like a good level of engagement with hotspot rental and working with other community organizations to try to, you know, stretch the Wi-Fi as far as you can? Or I suppose perhaps a better rephrasing is, you know, is um, is anyone else, you know, allowing for, you know, hotspot rental and how is that, how, you know, what has worked well for you, what hasn't worked well? Okay, Jamie in the chat is saying that the hotspots have always been popular and that they need more. Okay. Have you come across like any issues with the hotspots of like people not returning them or? Oop. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm seeing a lot in the chat about people needing more hotspots. So that's, in, on the one hand, that's good. That means, you know, they're being used and that people want them. On the other hand, you know, not being able to have enough of something. Um, I know it was mentioned at the assembly that one program that someone was doing, and I apologize if you're in here and I've just forgotten you, <laughs> that they were doing um, like movie uh, showings in the parking lot. Are you guys doing anything similar to that? It doesn't have to be movies. It could be uh, Wi-Fi in the parking lot or events of some sort. I think Emily is in here, I think, but I can't remember which library it was that was doing like car bingo or something to that effect. So I'm just curious whether like you guys have repurposed your parking lots for something other than parking. Thank you, Casey and Emily. It was Wakulla County. Uh, this is Candace with Osceola Library. Um, something new that's both a partnership and a parking lot thing um, that's come up for us is uh, the Osceola school system has these read buses now that they've launched this year. Um, and so they're using the library parking lots as locations for their read buses. Um, so we've like latched onto that to help support that and, and um, be a part of it so when they're there and doing their little um when they're doing their thing then our youth specialists are going to be there 
to point people to the library as well. So it's not, you know, um, just the schools using our parking lot, but we're actually um, interacting with the kids too. Okay, cool. That sounds like a really amazing opportunity. Um, there's some more messages in the chat about uh, the public Wi-Fi being accessible in the parking lot. Uh, Emily was saying that Flagler County Public Library is doing movies under the stars. Uh, Jody was saying in Winter Park that they have story times in local parks and at the farmer's market, which is super rad. I love farmer's markets. Um, that's a good point. Deborah's talking about how um, she advertises that the Wi-Fi will reach the parking lots because um, I'm, I just finished up a library juice course about uh, autism and clear signage and, you know, definitely like my first thought when I pull into a parking lot is not whether it, like not, you know, does this have Wi-Fi and then having a clear sign is definitely helpful for that. Um, I suppose uh, on the note of farmers markets and sort of gardening in general, I have been looking into uh, seed libraries and I know a number of libraries do have them but do any of y'all have seed libraries how is that working out um for you guys i know i've also looked at like canning sort of like you know where you go from seed gardening to like a community garden to you know uh harvesting and canning the results whether anyone has any partnerships with that but also do not let me dominate the conversation this is for you guys to talk about whatever you want to talk about so <laughs> I will lead as best I can, but if you let me, I will just, I will talk about anything I want to talk about. <laughs> but yes, yeah, seed libraries, community gardens, canning opportunities, canning classes. I know some of the um, county extension offices, centers, has like, uh, on, on hand? I am, wow, I am blanking on phrases. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hands on canning <laughs> classes so anything of that nature if you guys want to talk about that or another topic i don't have anything on canning but i had a question about the car bingo for you guys that are doing it, it sounds fun so i assume they honk when they get a bingo but how do you um do you use like a megaphone or something is there a lot of cars like how do you get the you know the call out the numbers i'm just curious about the logistics on that one I don't know, maybe we'll call it in the room. I don't think we do. Oh, yeah. Um, well, that one sounds good. I'll have to check in with them and, and find out. Yeah, and, and I can share a little bit only because I know that um, the staff members who run it have been in several of my flip sessions and every time they bring it up, they get a ton of questions and a ton of interest from it. Um, they have just like a microphone and a speaker that they use and so they um they stand at the front and call the numbers and then um the cars are spaced every other parking spot and they do it at a local community center because their parking their library is sort of on the outskirts of a small rural town and the community center is closer but obviously if you have a sizable parking lot then that would be ideal um and then they talked about how they pre uh, package the prizes, they pre-package the bingo cards and the daubers um, so that they can get all of that prepped ahead of time and then safely because then it can sit in quarantine. Um, and then they have, a, they said that they will pull around like a wagon <laughs> to pass things out and they, you know, they were masking up and wearing gloves. Um, Emily added in the chat that some local businesses donated prizes um so yeah they you know and of course they they're always more than happy they've always been really great about answering questions that was just sort of some of the logistics yeah that's fun yeah we i mean we had like bingo kits and glow bingo and all the fun things before covid but we hadn't thought of how to do that virtually yet but that's a fun idea um we're we're not uh doing in-person programs we're still doing everything pretty much entirely virtually but we are you know trying to make that as engaging as possible um we have like grab and go craft kits and, and things like that so it's not just i mean there are hands-on projects and things like for the reading festival that launched this week um 
we have grab and go kits for all ages. And so like even the adults will get a craft kit and it comes with a free book and it's like book folding art on the spine. Um, and then the kids get and the teens get age appropriate crafts and their free book that comes with that. Um, and then we've done cahoots with a lot of success. Those are really popular. Um, we've used WooBox for um, for contests. So like for the reading festival, the WooBox contests we're doing are STEAM related. So there's Lego challenges and art contests and um, just kind of maker space challenges and things like that. And so then they can win prizes for the most votes, you know, after after the entry period. Um, and then we've also, you know, you know, we try to like make the programs in, engaging. So we're starting to do more live interactive programs, whereas they were a lot of them recorded before. But now we have, you know, like the we had a virtual book club for our patrons this morning. We're starting up a virtual craft club. Um, and we're talking about a writing club. So, you know, trying to kind of have have engagement on those virtual platforms as well. Um, but I am going to do a ruthless plug for the Reading Festival. So if you haven't already heard, we've been trying to blast it all over Florida, but readfest.org is the homepage and it just kicked off. Um, it's a soft week this week, so you can mark your schedule, but all of the author presentations start next week. It's two weeks of author amazingness. So I hope you can come to our festival since anyone can attend this year. <laughs> Sweet, I am definitely going to check that out. Um, but yeah, for any, I saw a couple new people join in. We're just discussing uh, partnerships that are or aren't working for you, what you'd like to see in a partnership, that sort of thing. Also, if anyone has any cool things going on at their library that they want to tell me about, please email me. You can call me too. Uh, I have to get used to the phone. I used to work from home before this, so remembering that I have an office phone sometimes is a little. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, definitely, you know, send me an email if you ever want to just share something with me. I love getting emails about what everyone's doing at their libraries. I just wanted to also take a moment and circle back for a question that Kay French had about any tips for doing things at the market, because at their location, their city just started a farmer's market on Saturday and Sunday. So for those of you who, um, I know Jody was saying earlier that she has uh, story times and anyone else you know, if anyone has any tips, feel free to just um, put it in the chat. You know, if you have a microphone, just, you know, share the wealth. Well, I'll step in. I've uh, been attended our farmer's market for years as an outreach librarian. We have a book bike and we would go monthly to the farmer's market. So that is one great idea for a farmer's market is tabling or talking to uh, whoever's running it, in our case, it's Parks and Rec. And so they allowed us to have a space there uh, without having to pay. Um, the other thing is that we did start reluctantly having story times there after it was suggested by one of our board members, our children's department, of which I am not a part of, uh, said, oh my gosh, how are we gonna keep it quiet enough to, to have the children here at a farmer's market and, and not be distracted. And so I would say uh, number one is do it early in the morning and have a tent. And number two is to uh, try to find if your farmer's market allows for a place that's more remote and quiet, uh, that would be ideal if you're doing a story time. There's also a request in the chat to talk more about the book bike, which I know I've chatted with you a little bit about Jody. I love that book bike. I love book bikes in general. They're so cool looking. Yes, our book. I love our book bike. It. Um, we our winter park is nine square miles, so we don't have an outreach vehicle. Uh, this is our outreach vehicle. Uh, I was the one who who drove it. Uh, and of course, it's really been, you know, just garage kept for the last year mostly. So hasn't been out that much. But uh, but there's. We, we make a lot of partnerships in order to to find books that we can carry on the bike so that I can always give away books to children. So wherever the bike is, if there are children around, they know they get a free book from us. We do have a bookstore here. Many of you would also have uh, book sales or bookstores. And we so I do pull from that um, 
you know, kind of intake of children's books, but I will also well, make a partnership with Goodwill and they sort through their books that are returned from the stores and I'm able to go down a couple times a year and take on just uh, heaping tons of books that we can distribute out to the community. Uh, made a lot of, I can't even, when you said what partnerships do you have, I don't even want to you know, I mean, that was my job, so it was just a mile long. But I will tell you right now, just to get off book bikes run one minute, is that we currently have some strong partnerships with museums who are really looking to try to um, expand and extend their audiences um, and get connect, reconnect to people. Um, the Cornell Museum here is located on Rollins campus, and they reached out to us with their version of a take and make kit, which of course is very fancy and uh, very sought after. So they wondered if we could distribute that, and we've been doing that for them. The same has happened with WUCF, our local PBS station affiliate, who uh, reached out to us, and they had a kit as well uh, uh, aligned with Mr. Rogers and be our neighbor. And so we've been distributing their kits. Uh, Casa Feliz is a local museum that is has to do with uh, architecture and they have a series and we have been helping produce their series. In other words, like just kind of mix and cut uh, their their recordings and when it gets posted, it generates quite an audience for both of us. So we do have a lot of uh, different uh, partnerships. The book bike I could definitely go on and on about. I have a presentation. I can put my uh, information in the chat if you want to contact me. It was a donation by an Eagle Scout was one of the things that uh, I always like to mention. Okay, yeah, no, it seems like there's a lot going on at Winter Park, which is just fabulous. And partnerships with museums is also super great and super important. My background is actually more towards museums than libraries. Uh, so just, you know, hearing that is always wonderful. Um, in the chat earlier, uh, Candace had talked about needing relationship with farmers to get a supply of seeds. And I don't know if any of the people who currently have seed libraries want to maybe chat about or discuss, you know, where you got your seed resources from, because I know when I've done a tentative look, it seems to be sort of um, from various different nonprofit and other sources. So. Just for my own edification, I've been a little curious myself as to where all these libraries get all these seeds. Oh, Melissa is asking uh, you, Jody, if you can mention the Chamber Partnership. So well, either one, if we, someone wants to talk about the uh, seeds. If anybody or, wants to talk about seeds, I do need some information on seeds because our sustainability department at the city uh, wants to partner with us to provide the seed library. So that is um, something, and the, and the source of seeds is actually quite an issue. And they, of course, want uh, a very sustainable and um, maybe heirloom seeds and things like that. So we're, we're hoping to find a source, but and uh, we would be very interested. Uh, our chamber partnership is really uh, pretty unique. It's the Chamber of Commerce here at Winter Park. It's a very strong chamber, has a few hundred members. Uh, and what we have done with the chamber is connected them to any chamber members allowed to get a full service card at Winter Park. So this is a city municipal library. Um, again, it's it's a pretty small city, so you can't really access full service cards unless you live in the city. So it's a, it's a very good deal for somebody who might be a chamber member, but we go monthly to their orientation for new members and we describe all of our business resources. And honestly, whether they get a card or not, they walk away really stunned at what the library offers businesses. So for me, it's a it's very much a marketing move, even though we do sign up a lot of cards that way too, but they just are, are Reference USA and you know whether it's printing or 3D printing and our our video capabilities, all sorts of things that the the business community would just have no idea that that we have. So that's very strong, and I would definitely support and would help anybody try to find a way to make a membership a relationship with your chamber. Yeah, that sounds like a really excellent opportunity. That is super cool. Uh, in the chat, Melissa has said that uh, she has strong partnerships with our local media in uh, both English and Spanish TV and radio, radio media. That's great. I miss being in Tampa because I miss the chance to just speak Spanish with other people. I mean, obviously I could do it up here, but I feel like I don't have 
as much of an opportunity. <laughs> so that yeah, being a resource is great. And with COVID, you know, some of those opportunities are are now, you know, just remote, but, you know, they'll send us a Zoom link and we're able to, you know, go in live or um, they'll, we'll film ourselves promoting a library service and then um, they'll use those recordings and kind of piece them together with their story. So it's been really good. I mean, we've had some strong media partnerships since before the pandemic. So it's it's been good to even be able to extend it um, and get the word out because, you know, everything's a little different now and just trying to communicate how things are changed and different. It's It's been really good to have those connections to try to, you know, promote library services and the services that we're doing differently and making sure people still know about what we're doing and know about, especially in the beginning of the pandemic, know about curbside services and things that just didn't exist before. So it's been great. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, one thing I'm definitely noticing is that, you know, there's a real need to be marketing the services available. Um, so one question I suppose would be, um, like what sort of marketing language and mechanisms have you used that resulted in the greatest return? You know, what public awareness, greater attendance, that sort of thing. Um, you know, how has your uh, marketing been going with everything going on? And then just in general, I suppose. This is Candace from Osceola. I don't know that I can answer that question. I think that's an area, you know, we're trying really hard to do, but I don't know how well we're really doing, like getting those kind of words out. But I, I did um, want to mention just this is totally random, but um, a partnership that we started a couple years ago that um, it might be nice if other people wanted to know about it. It's called Culture City. Um, you had mentioned um, resources for people with autism and um, we actually were able through Culture City to get certified as a sensory inclusive location and they have um, training for staff and they provide signage and um, sensory kits and all this other um, stuff that comes with it that um, was really awesome and we're really proud of it so I definitely recommend looking them up. Culture City is with a K Yeah, I had completely forgotten. I have that uh, website, you you guys' website bookmarked uh, when I was looking at resources. Because um, the sensory friendly library, I would love for there to be, <laughs> I would love to have some noise canceling headphones um, just in general, but also be super great at libraries, easier to focus, easier to get stuff done. Casey has dropped the link to Culture City, which I appreciate. Um, whoop, missed a couple of messages here. Uh, Kay French says that they started an early literacy fun Facebook group for Storytime families. Started it seven months ago and have over a hundred families. That's amazing. That's great. Um, Emily wants to mention a partnership that she learned about from the Manatee County Library. Uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife will offer free rods and reels to outreach organizations. That's cool. I, I don't remember who it was who had said this, but there was one library director who was talking about how they have a lake or a pond or something nearby. So one of the things that they offer at their library is fishing pole rental so people can go fishing. Oh, great. Yay. I've always wanted to fish, but I don't know. I, I'm always afraid of touching the fish. <laughs> I'm realizing is a strange thing. Okay, Emily's saying you just have to agree to do a fishing education program and provide statistics. So, okay, that's super cool. Because I know in Florida, a lot of people like to fish. Oh, yeah. oh no. <laughs> Casey had to fish her daughter's camera out of a pond last weekend. Yikes. Um, as I was thinking about it, I don't know why it made me think of why ponds made me think of it, but uh, one potential partnership that I know I had just been working on for libraries was um, 
vision screenings with nonprofits. So I don't know if anyone, for those of you who weren't already emailed, and I apologized if if you were on that email and you already know about this, um, if anyone had, you know, sort of interest in vision screenings or health screenings, whether obviously in the current situation, that's probably not going on. But previously, if you had that going on, whether or if you wanted to have that going on, whether that's something you're interested in, I would just be curious to know. I don't know that they'd let us do it right now with COVID, at least not in my town. They are extremely risk averse. Yeah, and that definitely makes sense because the risk and just the nature of, you know, having to pile into the van or what have you to get it done. Oh, excellent. Casey's dropped a link to the fishing equipment program. I don't know why, but I always think fishing rods don't cost $1,000, even though I know intellectually they must to be a good fishing rod. So I definitely <laughs> agree with the sentiment that Emily has put about grandparents not wanting their grandkids to break their expensive fishing poles. Um, Deborah is talking about seed libraries and has said that they purchase varieties that are recommended through the UFIFAS office. 10 varieties per season. Yeah, definitely email Deborah if you want to get some information on where to get seeds from. I had chatted with Deborah briefly about the seed library and I learned a lot myself. I want to I want to start growing things, but living in an apartment it's a bit difficult. And I don't indoor gardening. <laughs> indoor yeah, indoor gardening until you have to take the pot out to get it some sun and then it mysteriously grows legs. So my my sister does not want to do that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, part of our partnership with Bridges is um, we are also, well, and with Parent to Parent, um, with Bridges, we're um, producing a, a, a video for them. Well, actually, it's a Zoom meeting um, at least uh, once a month called As the Page Turns. Um, and it's a 30 minute long segment uh, that our children's services person does. And she does a book and um, usually uh, a craft. And we send the information about the crafts to them to, before we do it. And then Bridges buys the craft supplies and gives it out to their, their clients who are coming to the Zoom meeting. Um, with parent to parent, we um, we've been providing the craft supplies, but we've been doing something similar with them every other month for the children. Okay, cool. It's a lot. Everybody seems to have a lot uh, going on as much as you can be in this current environment. Um, does anyone else have anything they want to share about partnerships or even just, just even if it's just pie in the sky, like, you know, if circumstances were 100% great and awesome, this is something I'd love to see at my library. You know, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be feasible. I'm just interested to hear what, you know, people might like, or even just ways that I can help you all better. Um, in terms of, you know, community engagement, helping to get your stories out there. Helping you to find more, you know, resources. Okay, Hi, Jamie. This is... Oops, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> hey, this is Shelly from Hillsborough County. And I was just curious if anybody um, in the chat today um, has any experience partnering with any corporate entities that um, sponsor the funding for your programming at all? We were doing that somewhat before COVID hit, um, but it was mainly with um, a, a credit union and a bank for them to do programming here. Um, one of the better places I've gotten speakers is through the Florida Bar um, Speakers Bureau. 
Um, and I think they do it all over the state, but they're nice enough that when you give them a date and a topic, they'll find somebody for you. So you don't have to try and call a bunch of different people to try and, and find someone who will do um, how to uh, write a will. Um, they'll You just tell them that you want somebody with wills and trusts and they'll find uh, a lawyer that specializes in that and for your time. Okay, we, thank you. When we um, would have our in-person staff days once a year, we would partner with um, the vendors that we use frequent, frequently, like um, we would um, subscribe to some EBSCO databases. So we got them to um, sponsor our staff day and pay for the food because the food can't be paid for with CA grant funds. but. So um, we got EBSCO, we got recorded books, um, you know, the, the places that we spend a lot of money, we reached out and we're like, hey, you know, we're such good customers of yours. Could you pitch in anything for our staff day? Thank you. Um, we have partnered with people. Uh, the Florida Bar one reminded me that um, we've had a speaker series with um, physicians, a physician's lecture series with a hospital near us, um, and they would arrange doctors to come out and talk about different topics, and those were really popular. Um, the doctors would get mad, though, if there weren't enough people there, so they really, you know, it, it has to be worth their time um to come out to make sure that there's like a, a good crowd but thankfully uh they generally were very well received and, and there was a good crowd um we also had uh the kissimmee utility authority the kua um has funded some of our stuff before um i don't remember which things but i know they they have offered to help with things before too not speakers but just sponsoring things. Thank you. Okay, um, so another thing that had just uh, come to mind is just sort of an example because, you know, um, we're not too far out from when hurricane season rolls back around for all of us. So I didn't know if uh, anyone had any sort of resources to share in terms of, you know, preparing, you know, before, during, after disaster, that sort of thing. Oh, uh, Judy is saying in the chat that the Florida bar doesn't charge for their uh, speaker services, which is great. Um, and that they've offered to do Zoom meetings, which is also good. But yeah, if anyone wants to discuss uh, disaster preparedness resources or uh, whether you've partnered with any sort of nonprofits to give like um, trainings or uh, presentations on disaster preparedness, that sort of thing, if anyone wants to talk about that. Or another topic, as always, anything that you guys want to discuss is perfectly A-OK. -okay. Well, pre-COVID, all my stuff is pre-COVID because we haven't been doing a whole lot of Zoom meetings or anything. Um, I would get the, um, the Palm Beach uh, County Fire Department would come in at least I had them coming in three to four times a year to do CPR and AED training. Um, they would give like a 45 minute course to anybody. It's not, doesn't give you certification, but you at least know what you're doing. Um, and we used to have PBSO come in and do programs all the time, um, especially with the kids on anti-gang and animal kindness and, and things like that.
Is your hand raised, Melissa? Because I think your video froze for a second. So I thought I saw you raising your hand, maybe. No, okay. uh, not me. There's another Melissa, but no. It's oh, someone... sorry. No, I, I just realized that. I was like, is that I got, another Melissa? I got... I got booted out and then I came back in. So sorry for the disruption if I caused it. No, no, you're fine. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, neither Melissa. Excellent. <laughs> um, speak on the subject. Of ever had... oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, has anyone ever had success with self defense courses? We've tried that many times, but um, always run into problems when we've tried to offer those. I guess not. Those are problematic, I guess. <laughs> and they won't let us do self-defense. <laughs> it goes under the risk adverse thing. Again, I can't even get yeah. them to do. I had I contacted who was it? Um they're out of Washington, but um they would they were willing to do Zoom meetings. Um but they teach uh basically verbal self-defense. Um so if you get cat called, if you've got somebody who's trying to start a fight with you, et cetera, how to, to um, de-escalate things, and they wouldn't even let me do that. <laughs> oh. But if you guys want that information, I'm sure I can find it. <laughs> Where is it? That sounds nice. Let me see if I can find it. I opened up my my contacts thing. it wasn't hollow back okay so while judy's looking for that um i did want to circle back to the subject of uh cpr uh training of sorts in uh, AED, that sort of thing. Um, I know at the Leon County Library, they were allowing people to take home um, CPR uh, sort of training kits. Um, and I was curious whether anyone else is uh, was considering doing that, is doing that, uh, that sort of thing, if anyone's doing something re related to the subject of uh, CPR and first aid. Okay, would anyone want to do something related to CPR? <laughs> or is that just the sort of thing where it's like there's just I don't know, not enough resources, time, you know, your patrons better, there's not enough interest. Or if I Deborah wants to share. <laughs> we, we don't have enough interest. Um, we're not doing in person right now, you know, I, but I think, I feel like, because we have a health librarian I, and she's done, um, I, I feel like she did something like this in the past, but she only got like a couple people. We, we we would do CPR training for our staff, but I'm not sure what the status is of it since COVID, because we're not, you know, doing hands-on programming. So that's probably just on hold. Um, but I, I could be wrong. I mean, they may be still offering those classes for staff. We used to offer them in the building, and then staff and patrons could come. But we we would always register our staff, so they were all trained. We've uh, had CPR here. Uh, for staff, but also for our patrons, but it's our teen librarian who really takes it on because, and tween librarian, because they find that the children who are like babysitting age will take a babysitting first aid and kind of a CPR class. So they've, they've had a lot of success with that. We've partnered with our fire department.
Okay, and um, I know Deborah from the Leon County Library is here. So Deborah, I don't know if you want to maybe touch on that, what you guys are doing there, um, if you want to talk about that or not. Found it. <laughs> it's called Defend Yourself. And they offer workshops in um, how to do uh, active bystander skills for interrupting racism, um, empowerment, and self defense. Okay, great. Thank you, Judy, for finding that. I'm sure that'll be really helpful for everyone. Um, as we come to the last about six minutes or so of this meeting, um, I just want to note that this will be a quarterly thing. And um, if you have any suggestions for what to do at the next, what you want to discuss at the next meeting, feel free to email me and I will drop my email into the chat. Um, but if anyone has anything they want to talk about in these last few minutes, please feel free to. I will be here. I won't disappear and fade away like in Back to the Future. So. I, I had one that I didn't know, or that I noticed nobody mentioned, but um, I usually, or I do a lot of stuff with the area, or used to, when we were in person, do things with the area agency on aging. Um, I'd have them come in every couple of months and they would do a SHINE program, which explained um, how to use Medicare and, and sign up for Medicaid and to sign up for Medicaid insurance. Um, and then they'd also come in and they'd do programs on um, things like uh, scams um, and uh, finances and things for seniors. Shine's doing some virtual programs for us too. So I think they've gone all virtual with their Medicare um, yep. classes. So if, if you guys aren't, aren't uh, checking into that, that's, all, that's an opportunity for you guys. Uh, the other thing I forgot to mention, I don't know if you guys are um, aware of the source books, virtual book clubs, but we've been we've been doing those monthly as well. Um, they take like a best selling author every month and feature them. They have a murder by the book club and a teen book club. Um, and and uh, it, you just to qualify for it. If you don't have the access, you just have to have 10 print copies of the book. So you, if you're an access customer, access 360, then you're probably already qualified for it. But um you know for the bigger authors we'll we'll do that and we'll add those to the calendar so we have a an author feature as well okay i just want to make a quick note that i'll also be um once we're done here sharing out the uh, recording and the notes from this meeting for anyone who wants to review it later for all these excellent resources that have been posted in the chat. Um, so I know there was no registration for this. So if I accidentally miss someone and you're like, hey, I never got this resource, please just email me and I will send it to you. Um, it's not a problem at all. Yes, Shine, serving health insurance needs of elders. That is an excellent resource. So many good resources posted today. I'm very happy and excited about that. Yeah, four, four minutes left. If anyone else has a real burning need that they would like to talk about or share a resource that maybe comes to mind. I know sometimes I remember things in the last two minutes of a meeting.
But if not, I also will not be mad or offended if you decide that, well, all right, that's a that's enough discussion about <laughs> anything today and just sort of slip away. And for the those for the few of you who are still here, just saying, you know, thanks for coming and we'll see you at the next one. <laughs>